Welcome to Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project from Colorado State University Extension. We're here to help you learn to grow food for yourself, your family, your neighbors, and your community. Share the harvest, keep it local. Gardens in windy areas. If your garden is getting blown away by the wind in Colorado, you're not alone. Wind can have a tremendously bad effect on all of our vegetable crops. It causes them to dry out faster. As plants try to cool themselves, they transpirate, they move water through their leaves and stems, and the wind will wick this moisture away faster than the plant can take it up from the soil. It also will rock the plant back and forth, interfering with the development of the root structure and causing stem or trunk cracks. As we can see ourselves, the wind can shred leaves. It also moves soil particles or sand and grit, and that abrades the plant itself, scratching and wounding the plant tissue. This opens those wounds up for more wind, wicking moisture out of the plant, compounding a lot of the problems of drying out from persistent wind. Also, flower parts dry off more quickly, and they are less appealing to pollinators. Um, it reduces the receptivity of the pistil to the pollen, and given that the pollinators are not as inclined to visit you know, dried out flowers, this reduces pollination and uh, you get lower fruit set and lower yield. As wind speed increases, plant development slows and growth becomes restricted. This is why our plants appear stunted. We have shorter inner nodes, that space between the leaves. They might develop thicker stems and smaller leaves to try to cope with the fact that they're living in a wind tunnel. How do we care for plants in a windy area? Well, they're working harder at maintaining the moisture they need. So hydration is important and uh, drip irrigation and good consistent moisture in the root zone is crucial. Adding an extra inch or two of mulch is a great way to keep that soil cool and the water in. But if the wind is moving it off faster than you can put it down, you may need to go with some kind of a light mesh and tack that down over the mulch to keep it in place. Drip irrigation placed under the mulch is excellent and use a water timer so that you can irrigate your crop and not lose track of how much water or how long those soaker hoses are running. Blocking the wind is a little more challenging. Traditionally in open fields, a windbreak made from trees and shrubs have been used for centuries. This is three rows typically planted of various heights in order to push the wind up and above the area you're trying to protect. It's most effective when space is not an issue and you can orient those windbreaks at a right angle to the prevailing wind. Here we have a photograph of a field that has been broken up by windbreaks. So placing the, the three or more types of plants staggered in height will force the wind up and through that windbreak. And when I say through, what we want is a porous windbreak. So the wind can softly push through some of those plants and it slows it down without creating a problem with a vortex behind the windbreak. Constructing a windbreak means understanding how the, the wind moves around a solid object. If your windbreak is a solid wall, the wind will move over or around it, but it creates a strong vacuum on the leeward side of that solid object, and things become really turbulent back behind there. This really negates any kind of protection that windbreak would give you. What's a more effective windbreak is to have something that is porous, such as trees and shrubs. This allows some wind slowed down as it moves through the windbreak itself to push through and it negates that vacuum on the back side or the leeward side of the windbreak. 
The longer the windbreak itself, the greater the protection because wind will come around the sides also. So, you know, you don't want to uh, make it too short of a run. Otherwise, it will come around and slam back into itself on the other side. Where is the sweet spot for getting the best protection from wind? There's a little bit of math involved, I'm sorry. Wind breaks will give you protection roughly 30 times the height of the windbreak itself. But not, not that whole distance is fully protected from the wind. The ideal location for having um, the wind uh, broken up and it's at its slowest speed behind the windbreak is approximately five to seven times the height of the windbreak away from it. For example, if you're planting a 25 foot tall windbreak and you want to place a garden where it will be the most protected, then it needs to be five to seven times that height away from it. In other words, 125 to 175 feet away from it. That's the sweet spot for windbreaks. So windbreaks are kind of a problem for those of us who live in the urban or suburban areas. We have smaller lots to contend with, so we need a smaller um, type of a windbreak. These are wind screens. They don't completely block the wind, but they will temper it, again, allowing some air to come through so we don't get that vacuum back behind it. In many instances, leafy plants are the ideal windscreen. They need to typically be a, a evergreen or a plant that will um, be provide that cover year round. But we do have other choices for a small lot that will work just well. It can be a section of a fence or a wall, perhaps a pergola that has one side that's enclosed. But again, these barriers do need to be porous, about two thirds solid to one third um, open areas so the wind can push through. When planting your small space windscreen, if you're going to be using plants themselves, this is a very practical way to try and make use of your lot, especially if your HOA doesn't allow for fencing or other more permanent structures. Um, the evergreen plants that I mentioned are the most appropriate for this, and they need to be planted close enough to form some kind of a solid wall between them. So typically about four to five feet away from each other to create that kind of a windbreak for your plants. But if you're in a semi-arid semi -arid or an arid location, the, the reality is using living plants as your windscreen is not practical. It's not a good use of our resources because you'd have to irrigate it. So instead, don't use plants. Use something solid such as this snow fencing or um, other types of fencing that like the slat fencing you can see here on the top image. These are typically going to give you 80% solid with 20% open space to allow that wind to push through. To uh, give them support, use steel or cement uprights whenever possible. You can use wooden uprights if they've been sunk into the soil and uh, concreted in. The windbreak does need to be constructed in a one to five or one to seven ratio with the protected area. So all of that math still applies. Put these close enough to the garden to provide that kind of windbreak, but uh, it needs to be five to seven times of the height of your windbreak away from the garden to provide the ultimate protection for it. Here's an example of a fiberglass screening. This is used uh, to protect from wind or snow, and you can get them at big box stores typically. And it does help a lot in smaller areas, and you can create a nice little fence uh, with the roll. Just make sure you secure it so that it's uh, braced and anchored well for the wind that'll be pushing against it. And in tiny locations, when you first set your transplants out, you can do some spot protection with things like this plastic sheeting that's been anchored around your transplants. And another great uh, type of uh, small plant protection comes from lawn signs. 
we're coming into a political season, so you may have lawn signs that are left over, or somebody might have been roofing your house or painting it and asked you to display that sign. Don't throw them away when you're done with them. They're great for placing out in the garden to provide one little plant with a little bit of protection. Learn more, grow more. Contact your local CSU Extension office for more information.